quick rundown using HP tuners on how to just get a basic, basic, basic tune started in your Hemi. Uh, most importantly, turning off the MDS, a little bit um, throttle response increase, torque management. We'll run through some basics. First and foremost, most important is turning off the MDS. Um, the Turning it off doesn't guarantee you that the lifters are not going to fail, but it definitely helps. Um, it, they ne definitely never engage in the four-cylinder mode again. Um, definitely one of the best reasons to get a tune in your Hemi. It's worth it. Um, so right here in the stock tune, you see it's enabled. You just go to disable, and you're good there. Let's see. Next, we'll do... Uh, basically fuel power enrichment so right here you have the pedal this is the pedal voltage that the PCM decides that you're at wide open throttle and that's when enrichment ratio is changed etc it refers to the wide open throttle timing tables etc so the stock voltage is 3.35 um, I usually adjust it, lower it by about 14, 15%. So I got it at 2.9. Basically, whatever percentage you do up here, you do here. So take 3.3, multiply it by 0.85, and do the same thing down here. Um, power enrichment, you def you probably sh shouldn't have to change on a stock vehicle. Um, if you really, if you have a cammed vehicle and you really need to dial in air fuel, um, you're going to use the VE table, which is under the speed density tab, VE, yeah, bank one, bank two. Um, now with Dodges, to do this, you have to turn off neutral network. Um, I generally leave neutral network on, on like a bolt-on car, and... Um, Basically, the PCM, it's like a self-learning feature, basically, for the VE. And what I do, if you need to make minor adjustments to fueling, you do it here in the power enrichment um, area. But that's basically called raping the PE. It's not ideal, but on a vehicle with just like a intake, catback exhaust, generally all you have to do. Um, if you have a vehicle with a cam, long tubes, etc., then you want to turn neutral network off and dial in the VE and the speed density table. All right. So next thing we'll look at is torque management. So now do this at your own discretion. Um, you see here all the stock stuff's enabled, maximum torque. I increased this to about 500. This is the tune I'm working on, by the way, is on a 2014 392 SRT Jeep. For torque management, I turn everything off except the spark torque management. So basically, you will not fully disable torque management, but the spark stays enab enabled. So it will still pull spark on the shifts. Um, which is what you want. Keep that transmission and transfer case alive. A lot of these other miscellaneous ones, um, I just turn off and it runs great. Let's see. Driver demand, same thing. This is uh, another throttle response table. This is where the pedal is considered wide open throttle. Um, I also drop this by about 15%. So basically take that number, multiply it by 0.85. Same here, max flywheel torque. Um, if it's like a stock vehicle with just some bolt-ons intake, cap back, I'll basically increase these numbers by about 10%. Um, you, you can't just max these out. It will freak everything out possibly. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Spark, your big spark tables. Now, Hemis, they don't like a lot of spark, especially the 6.4. You could, you know, add a degree or two, possibly. Um, the knock sensors are very sensitive in these. Um, really not much to gain there. 
Uh, let's see what else. Um, your fans, if you have an aftermarket thermostat, you could set your fans to come on a little sooner. The factory's got them set to come on. Um, low speed, 216, 219, 223. I dropped that to about 196, 199, 210. And I do it to all the tables here. I'm using the 797 Performance um, Thermostat Delete. And I'm using the larger restrictor. Um, with that, you might also get a code. If you do get a code about the low temperature, um, that's somewhere in here. I think it's PO128. Yeah, coolant temperature below thermostat regulating temperature. Um, so right there you see on the factory, it's still on. If you need to turn it off, uh, you just turn off the mill. And that's it for that one. Next best thing is the trans on these. Now I'll make this real quick and basic. I'm not going to go into big detail because there's a lot to it. Um, first off, your trans RPMs. So Dodges, basically the shifts are based off of not mile per hour like you see on a lot of other um, GM and Ford vehicles. It's based off of output shaft RPM. So basically, if you go into your scanner, you see, uh, where is it? So basically, when you're in sport, it's shift ID 7, sometimes it's 5. And when you put it in um, manual shifter mode, that shift ID goes to 28. So basically, if you need the, if you want to bump your shifts up a couple RPM, you find shift pattern 28 and basically increase these. Now from the factory, these are set really high. I like my truck to upshift on its own in manual paddle mode. Um, so basically I could downshift it, but once it hits um, the targeted RPM of the output shaft, I want it to shift. Otherwise it'll hold on a limiter. I, I just feel like the paddles have a delay. So basically what I do is you take your sport shift numbers at the 100%, and if those work well, you take your 100% table, and you basically make it all the way down from zero throttle position to 100. Make those all match. So this way you could downshift with the tap shift paddles behind the steering wheel, but it won't upshift until you're at red line, until you're at your desired um, output shaft RPM. Uh, let's see, shift pressures, um, I would only suggest up in these maybe 10%, 15, um, upshift oncoming clutch, same thing, I've got mine a little bit, a little bit spicier, but basically increase these 10, 15%, or a lot of times what I recommend doing is taking your sport settings and copying them over to the normal. Shift timing, um, factory's got 400 milliseconds. These trucks seem to shift really well at 300 milliseconds. Uh, let's see, upshift. These are your inertia modes. So basically you add a little bit to the nominal slip time here, or but you remove a little bit, I apologize. So the factory tune has about 350 and this is slip time so it's like milliseconds so the factory tune has 350 i reduce these i go about 300 200 um see what's comfortable for you see what you like one thing you could do if you want to be safe which i really recommend is just take your sport table settings and copy them over to your normal you'll love it um let's see torque converter slip you don't want to touch that torque management um so you could reduce these numbers basically reducing these numbers reduces how much torque management so you know you go you basically highlight this and you know reduce it by 15 percent um i'd recommend starting there don't get too aggressive with this um same thing, force torque intervention. 
This is also torque management. These work the same way. Basically, if you take these, reduce them by say, you know, 15, 10%, see what you like. But I'd recommend 15% is much, I'd recommend doing it by, oops. So basically do that for every shift. Um, downshift, I don't touch. That's just a real, real quick run through of what will get you started. And just those basic changes will make your car drive really nice. Actually, there's one more uh, table I got to find. Um, oh, right here, MDS cutoff. So basically, I wouldn't increase. These are your cutoff RPMs. Um, a lot of guys like me to increase the park neutral red line rev so they can show off. Um, and MDS cutoff. Basically, I just put this to 6,500 just to match the factory limiter. Obviously, MDS is disabled. There's another tab here. This is MDS torque reduction. Um, I often end up having to zero this out if you notice the vehicle when you're logging on shift is actually closing the throttle body this is a table it's rpm limit um i basically just uh zero that out and this way it won't close the throttle on you on shifts um and that's pretty much the very very basic rundown of uh hemi tuning all right thanks